So my name's Anna. I just recently graduated from a Bachelor of Laws with honours at UQ, the University of Queensland. But prior to that, so that was four years, but prior to that I did three years of a biomedical science degree. So I graduated with first class honours, which means for my program that we did, it means that you got a GPA of above 6.2. Yeah, if I could summarise it, there were a couple of subject related prizes that I got for individual subjects. But then my, I guess my law school experience really culminated in when I was awarded valedictorian for semester two of 2020. So there are always two valedictorians each year, just depending on, just because there are two graduating classes. So there was a semester one valedictorian and I was the semester two valedictorian. And fortunately I was also selected um, as a valedictorian to give the speech at the graduation ceremony, which was really lovely and I really enjoyed that. So I've got a couple of months off between when I graduated, which was around December of last year, and when I'm starting my very first job, which in July I'm going to be moving to Canberra to work as a judge's associate at the High Court of Australia. Studying smarter is probably the difference between a good student and a great law student, in my opinion. It's not necessarily studying harder and spending as much time as you can, it's studying smarter because there's always something extra that you can be reading, there's always something more, but it's about knowing what is going to make the difference. Not just throwing everything on a page that you can read, you know? It's showing to your lecturer, I've read widely, but I'm going to use the information in this way and I've really thought about it. An example of studying smarter and not harder is maybe before class, for example, there's obviously a variety of readings that you should do before class to get yourself really prepared. Have an idea of the material and what's gonna be talked about. Be ready to ask a couple of questions if you want, or at least be familiar with what's gonna come up in that class. But don't necessarily try and read everything beforehand. Wait until you see what's discussed in class and what are the really sticky points that come up and that are really discussed and that your teacher might focus on and then go back and then say, oh, okay, now I sort of know what to read. So maybe start with some basic readings, go to class, see what's talked about, see what are the really important things. And then after class, go back and be like, right, we talked a lot about this. Now I'm gonna actually go and read. Because there's a variety of times that you're gonna come to something in class and there's gonna be an area of law that is not really settled. And then your teacher might say, here are just some academic articles or here's part of your textbook where it's discussed a little bit more. And they're just recommended for anyone who's curious in law reform or where this area might go. But that's something that is maybe worth the time doing the recommended readings because then, and this comes back to the earlier point about what might take someone from a five or a six to a six or a seven is being able to draw on those points about where can the law go um, where can it develop? What are the sticky points? What are the unsettled points? Stuff like that, I think, is really sometimes the difference for teachers between someone who just can tell you what the law is and can recite the textbook at you versus someone who says, this is what the law is and it's a sticky point and this is what I think about it. So in preparing for exams, there are two main resources that I look at. Number one, the seminar preparation that your teacher set you. 